I am. See, I can't find the video. Hello, fellowship. Happy Friday. Teresa, happy Friday to you. Megan. Mighty Megan. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to be starting here in a moment, officially at 8 o'clock. Jim, good to see you. Of course, you can see me, I can't see you, which is one of the interesting things about Facebook Live. But it's, uh, it's eight o'clock and I will get started with uh, today. And for those that uh, will continue uh, to join us. I'm looking forward to um, speaking with you this way. Jim Kristoff, good morning to you. And the, um, I just want to say good morning fellowship. Uh, I'm here at our home in Cleveland, I'm sorry, in Shaker Heights. And uh, Delene has got me all set up with this on, on her Facebook Live. And I want to just thank Margo and Megan uh, who have provided invaluable assistance on this uh, just to get it going. I've heard some other stories uh, about trying to um, get going on Facebook Live. Cheryl, uh, good to see you this morning. And I uh, want to also just think about those that have uh, gone before me on this. It's been, uh, I, I think it's been remarkable watching uh, so many uh, of us, so many of you uh, sharing, you know, from your hearts what's been going on and in teaching. Uh, I want to thank uh, Candice and uh, Davis. I thought they've just done uh, a marvelous job with, um, with what they've shared with us uh, in the past. Um, also, for my fellow elders who have uh, gone before, uh, for for Dave and Matt and Jim, uh, Gary, uh, Eric, and Bob, I think you guys just laid down, uh, set the bar high and have laid down a, a smooth pass. And of course, uh, just thinking about our executive staff with uh, Aaron, Joe, Matt, and uh, Jeff, and just how they've they've um, uh, given us uh, not only a, a good word. Uh, to, to think about in our daily lives, but uh, also just to, uh, to share from their heart. And, uh, and I also think about uh, some of our missionaries that have been able to speak to us. Uh, I'm thinking about Phil Cabildo yesterday. I really appreciated his thoughts, and uh, especially on this whole topic of trust. You know, we've talked about that from the, serm uh, from the pulpit quite a bit, and I, I liked his words there. But like Elon Musk said with the uh, launch of SpaceX last week, that if it goes well, then it's, if this goes well today, then it's because of all that have gone before me and all the work that's been done. And if it goes poorly, well, then that's on me. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, an elder at fellowship. Uh, I'm also a small group leader. So uh, so hello to the North by Northwest group, uh, if, uh, if you may be on. Um, you may have also seen me shaking your hand uh, occasionally in front of the church as we were uh, coming in for our services, uh, at least back in the day when we did that type of thing. I'm not sure how we're going to work that into the future, but hopefully we're going to be able to see one another in the not too distant future, uh, back in the church, but but usually when I meet somebody uh, new, I what I say is, 
oh, I'm Delene's husband. And that usually gives uh, instant recognition uh, for me because everybody knows Delene. But um, what I'd like to do uh, maybe before we get started and what I was thinking about and sharing is uh, uh, looking at, um, let, me, let me open us with, with prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and may your work be done not only uh, in our time together this morning, but throughout this day. And I think, Father, about all of the turmoil that's going on in our country, and I just ask that you will be with us. Give us your mind, your thoughts uh, during this this special and important time in our lives. We thank you for all of this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Okay. Uh, well, again, I, I, I just kind of come back to a thought that uh, Aaron has shared with us about this whole Facebook Live, that this is a, a real opportunity for, for all of us to get to know one another better and to see us maybe in a, a sort of a different setting. So I thought, okay, if you want to get to know me a little bit better, I've got um, four things about me that may or may not be true. And I'm going to let you decide which you think uh, might be true and uh, which uh, are not. And uh, we'll review those here in a, a moment. So the first one is my middle name comes from a famous British statesman, all right? Uh, number two is my family history in Ohio predates Moses Cleveland. For those of you who don't know who Moses Cleveland is, he's the fellow that Cleveland is named after. Um, number three is a little, it's an interesting one. Uh, if I wrote an autobiography, a chapter of it would be titled, My Years as a Hooker. And number four, I'm married to a woman who has performed in Carnegie Hall. So, have no idea what you're uh, thinking about some of those things, especially number three, but uh, middle name, uh, family history, autobiography, and a chapter, and uh, Carnegie Hall. So, um, depending on what you think or how you've answered some of those questions, if you answered uh, that they were all true, then actually you'd be right. They, they are all true. Um, my middle name is Winston, and I'm a junior, and uh, my father was named after Winston Churchill. So, and as far as uh, family history, Turhan Kirtland was the, uh, the first to lead a surveying party here to the, what was then the Western Reserve that we know, that was also owned by, at that time, the Connecticut Land Company, and uh, he was a part of that, and laid out the first road in Ohio, which is, turns out, is Chillicothe Road, or Route 306, which runs right in front of the church. And I've often thought that was kind of an interesting little piece. Uh, he also wrote a letter to uh, Turhan Kirtland, I'm sorry, to uh, Moses Cleveland, and um, inviting him to come to this sort of wonderful area. And so Cleveland did come, and Cleveland's named after him, and uh, uh, Kirtland, Ohio, is named after um, Turhan Kirtland. And as to this third one, uh, you know, I'm not sure where your minds were going with that word, but if you've ever seen the game of rugby, you would know that the, uh, uh, the, the, the guy in the middle of the scrum, you know, that bringing together the two sides, uh, there actually are two hookers uh, in the middle of that scrum, and that's the position I played uh, in college on uh, uh, our rugby team. It's also the equivalent of the uh, Center on American Football. So uh, anyway, that's my life. My years as a hooker were, were in that, engaged in that activity. And then Delene has sung in Carnegie Hall. 
uh, with the uh, Chicago Symphony Chorus, and uh, she's an accomplished soprano, and I love listening to her sing. But um, but I, I say all that, uh, not so much about me, but just to kind of give a little background and to think about something that I've been reading over the years uh, by Paul and, um, and an element that I've been sort of scratching my head over the years uh, in Philippians 3, 7. So if you have your a Bible, if you want to turn to that, but I, I'll come back to it. Um, but I, and I want this time to be more of a, a sharing time. This is just kind of like what I see God doing in my heart. And uh, the, uh, the point is to uh, share and, and not so much of a teaching. But let me, let me put a little perspective on this. You know, I was raised in uh, what you would consider a Christian home, a Presbyterian uh, went through communicating class, you know, did the whole kind of thing there most Sundays uh, in church. But uh, probably in my later high school years, early college years, I really put that aside. I came to uh, a point where I just thought that was a lot of nonsense and uh, didn't seem to, uh, uh, you know, have truth to it. But the, uh, um, but the, I did have sort of a Damascus Road uh, experience and, um, and, and came to that saving knowledge of Christ. So the, uh, but the one verse that I was referring to in uh, Philippians 7 has been something kind of as a, of a mystery to me until I'd say at least recently. And, and in the NIV, it says, but whatever were gains for me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And I've often thought, okay, are all things that I gained a loss? Um, so like, how, how can that be? So all of my upbringing, all of my accomplishments, uh, uh, are they all rubbish? Are, are they all worthless? Are they, were they a, truly a loss? And but lately, you know, I've been thinking about that and thinking about uh, something called the exchanged life. And uh, as I think about that, I, I you know, and if you read in Colossians 2, 9 and 10, it says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And here important, you are complete in him. So I, I, I think about that. Um, it's it's not our accomplishments that that's earned that position, uh, but what like we just read, we are complete. If you're in Him, if you've come to that same saving knowledge of Him, you are complete in Him. I don't have to achieve anything. I don't have to get better at something. Um, I, I often think too about uh, Revelation four. Uh, verses 10 and 11, where it's the, the scene of the 24 elders that are casting their crowns uh, down before the throne. And, uh, and they're doing that because it says, uh, for you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So I think about that. Here are these 24 elders who had been giving these extremely precious uh, crowns. Can you think it's the most important thing that they could possibly have on? But they got them not because of accomplishments uh, that, that they did. They got them because of uh, what it was given, they were given to them. It was by grace that they were given these things. And so they took this thing that's uh, precious but uh, comes from him, and they willingly take it off their heads and, and throw it at the, the feet of Christ. So, so I think back to Paul and, and what he's saying, and, and, and I identify with Paul sometimes. Uh, you know, he had a certain family lineage. He had a good upbringing. Uh, he had accomplishments. His were primarily, you know, scholastic and uh, religious, but he was, he was a leader, you know, in his community. So, so what's wrong with that? And, 
And, and, and what's wrong with that is that if we're in Christ, we're either in the flesh or we're in him. Uh, you know, once we've come to that saving knowledge of him and, ex and exchanging our life for his, you know, our uh, path for his, our kingdom for his kingdom, then, um, then we enter into his life and his power and, and are being transformed. And, and you, you, you know, I say those words, I hear those words, I think about those words, but, um, and it's like Phil, uh, Phil Cabildo was talking about yesterday on trust. Uh, are we really trusting or are we only kind of talking about it in the abstract? So I think that's what part of this is, is all about. And, and so as I think to Paul and Philippians 3, 7, and him counting his gains as lost, uh, I think about all the time and the energy that we spend or we have spent on, on our accomplishments uh, that are not being in him. And so it becomes sort of our glory. Uh, we can dress it up. We can say nice things about it. We can ask his blessing on it. But it boils down to the same thing. And it's just whose glory is it? Is it his glory or is it our glory? So... Again, Paul, in so many different places in the epistles, uh, he, he's come to this revelation that there is no reforming the old man. Uh, you, um, I, one uh, uh, men's group Bible study that I'm in, uh, we're studying a book, here it is, called The Green Letters. And um, uh, in one section, I really uh, appreciated what Watchman Nee had to say. Uh, I don't know if you know Watchman Nee. He was a he's been a famous uh, 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 Chinese uh, theologian and writer, uh, prolific writer uh, in the early part of the uh, uh, 20th century. And um, he had this to say. He said, "God's God's means of delivering us from sin is not by making us stronger and stronger, but by making us weaker and weaker." And uh, so again, I think about Paul in, in Romans 7, where he makes this really startling uh, case that it is absolutely futile, absolutely futile for us to try to uh, continue sort of to dress up uh, the old man and, um, and try to piece together our life because it's... Uh, because there's this there's this law that's operating in us that's called the law of sin. It, it it will defeat us every single time. There is no way uh, that that we can fight against it. It is it, it's uncontrollable and it's unconquerable. Uh, it's unconquerable by us because it's a law, and that's what a law does. It's it's like gravity. You know, it's a law, and it happens every single time. But there's a, another law. Uh, that can take place. And so in Romans 8, 2, he says, the, and this is what's crucial, the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there's another law that's also infallible that is uh, that conquers. Uh, and, and so Christ not only saves us from sin through that, but he gives us his entire kingdom that we can be seated with him in heavenly places. So the question is, why wouldn't we exchange our life for his life? And in Galatians uh, 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ and the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God. So, so here again, we see Paul is talking about exchanging his life and identifying with Christ's death and his resurrection. So coming back to Philippians 3, 7, as I've read that over now uh, more fully and, and thinking about it, um, 
it's that Paul's accomplishments, you know, his gains uh, were from the time he spent away from Christ and not in Christ. And so he is saying every moment that I've spent in my life where I really haven't been in him, it's away from him. And what a waste of time that is. Why even bother with doing that? So, uh, and, and that for him was not only on, you know, his life before Damascus Road, but uh, it's after that. And, um, and that's, that's what he felt was so critical. So it's, I, to me, this is a very subtle, but, uh, you know, it's a hugely important point. And I've been contemplating it, uh, thinking about it uh, more and more. And, and I, I have to tell you, I'm becoming more comfortable uh, relinquishing my life and taking up his life and letting my gains actually be his gains. So those are my thoughts. Uh, I, um, I hope that that makes some sense to you. If it doesn't, <laughs> then I haven't said it very clearly and I want to keep working on that. Um, and I look forward to maybe sharing some more of that uh, with you. Uh, anyway, I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd share some things from my heart um, and spirit and, 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 and hope you'll just bear with me as I uh, play out more of this uh, in my life. Uh, and I thank you for that. So with that, and because I can't take any questions, uh, although I can see some comments that have been coming through and appreciate those. Um, let me, let me just close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that as your children, we're able to approach you, to have communion with you, and that's only because of the, the blood, the precious blood, the death, and the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And those, we don't want those to be just words, Father, that we say, but we make, uh, uh, but we see Holy Spirit, we just, we just ask that you will help us truly realize that it's not me, but it's Christ in me that pleases you. We thank you. I thank you for that. Amen. So, I hope I didn't take too much time uh, today, but uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to be here to share this with you. I hope that um, uh, you'll go in peace uh, for the rest of the day and may God bless. Thank you. Bye.